Welcome to episode 10 of the History Students Podcast. Master Andrew is here, and David's either here or here, depending on where he's sitting on my screen. I don't know, but it's all good. It is good to be back. David, what have you been up to? It's Monday. We're recording this, so I haven't seen you since last night. So what's the love? What's yeah, it's been, it's been nearly 14 hours, and um, I've biked five miles, so that was fun. Yeah, no, I've just been going about my daily business, just doing, doing what needs to be done. Read, had my quiet time this morning, had a good time. Um, yeah, I, I helped my dad load some hay, which was a pain because they weigh from anywhere to 80 to 120 pounds and it was 80 bells and I wasn't expecting that. So now I have blisters on my head. Nice. So you've done some work. That's my morning. Literally. I've done some work today. I'm, I'm, I'm very tired and it's only 12 o'clock. Yeah, and you still got a lot to do, I'm sure, with other things, so. Uh, so yeah, you, I'm, I'm knocking it out. You said you biked five miles? Yeah, I have a stationary bike. Okay, all right. Cool. I was going to ask yeah. my next question. Stationary versus a road bike. I want a road bike. I want a road bike too, but okay. it's cold. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting chilly. It's getting chilly. It's too hot or it's too cold, man? One of the two. It's, hey, it's kind of kind of like hell. Speaking of, what a transition. What a transition, man. All right, so this past week, those of you that were there, if you weren't there, if you watched us online, we were talking about eternity. We were talking about understanding eternity, and in particularly last night, we talked about, uh, and this is the, the previous night that we had this, I guess. You can't ever say last night because this is going to be online forever, so no one knows what you mean. But we talked about uh, our lives being temporary. Uh, we talked about the our souls are eternal, and we talked about the fact that God is eternal. And then we really asked the, the main question. The main question that really framed the night was this question of, is what we're doing right now important for eternity? That, that was the question. So the decisions that we make, the choices that we make, the way that we live out our lives, are, is that important in light of eternity? So David, what, I mean, what, what is, what are we talking about there? Let's, let's just, let's just go. We don't have a script. So let's just talk about this. <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> what is important in light of eternity? Well, firstly, it's important to establish what eternity is, and we did that. Uh, you did that pretty well over the last two weeks here. But I think just a quick recap: we are God is eternal. We are not eternal, uh, but heaven and hell is also eternal. So it lasts forever. It lasts outside of time, and that's what we're up against. So here on Earth, you know, for our average lifespan of seventy-four to seventy-six years, depending on whether you're a man or a woman. Is what you're doing going to influence yeah. your existence either in heaven or in hell? Yeah. So what is it right now that you're doing that will influence that, which is outside of this earthly realm? So that's what we're talking about. Now, now what else? <laughs> so, no, that's good. I think you're right. I mean, understanding that. You know, and I like what you said there, although I would add a, I would add an asterisk beside one thing. And Do one it. thing that I would add would be, um, we, while our bodies are not eternal, our souls are. And I think that's the end to understand that, uh, that, that there is a reality behind whether or not we are, where we're going to spend eternity. And I think this is a question, I, I don't know, I feel like a lot of us, we don't think about this a lot. Um, I know me, I, I personally, you know, I think, you know, well, obviously, if I'm if I'm in Christ, then then my eternity is set. Like I'm I'm in heaven. I'm in Him. Like I'll be with Him and dwell within Him. But I think in, in a lot of our teaching that we come across today, you know, we don't really put a lot of emphasis behind there is an importance in how we live our life. Even though, let's say we are a believer, you know, if we're if we're not a believer, we know that the the choice is clear. It's either trust in Christ, believe in Christ, follow Him come to know him, ask for forgiveness. You and I had that conversation. Make sure that we're going to him and repenting of those things. But at the same time, I think, uh, so on, on that side, we, we know that it's like heaven or hell. But as believers, I think sometimes we, we, we tend to go, okay, I've said the prayer. I'm, I'm good now. So now I'm going to kind of go do my thing. Like I'm just going to go to church and do my thing. But we don't necessarily think about how, how even after that, yeah, we may be secure in heaven, but there, there's still eternity at stake with the decisions that we face in our day-to-day -day lives and the things that we do. I mean, am I, am I wrong there? No, I, I, I totally think, I totally agree. I think you're totally correct. And I, I, and to do that, what you describe as getting saved, securing your salvation, um, working on your own justification, 
mm-hmm. but not trying to mentor or help others along the way, not trying to disciple other people the way that if you're a Christian, you've hopefully been poured into by your peers or by your mentors or by those who you look up to. If you don't do that, if you don't pour into someone else, then you are being sinful and selfish. Yeah. Yeah, So I forget the exact passage and I forget exactly um, where it was, but in Matthew, it was talking about, I believe it was chapter nine. It was my journal this morning and it was, the, no, it was about the harvest. The Lord, the Lord said to his disciples, there is much to harvest, but few laborers. And so if we don't create more people who will labor over the harvest, then what's the point exactly? Because the crop will go bad, right? So Jesus is out here performing all these miracles and he's doing it all in, in light of, well, in, in to glorify himself so that we understand the importance of his godliness and eternity but if we're not helping expand the gospel then we are inherently selfish we are sinful in that nature yeah i think that makes any sense i think that makes sense i i gave a i don't know if it was part of this one or as part of another one so like because we've been working through a lot of spiritual warfare we've we've gone from spiritual warfare and what that that looks like to angels and demons and we talked about all that so we, we've been in like a little bit of a a different realm than your typical uh, i think student ministry or church in general would walk through for a while and this is all building up to a study on revelation in in the coming weeks but one of the things that that i want to to point out there is and i think i said it i can't remember like i said i can't remember what context it was in or what we were talking about but i said how much do we have to hate somebody in order to send them to hell and what i meant by that is is that we have the we have the light we have the good news as believers we have that good news and so it is up to us it is our it is our uh, responsibility to take that and pass it on i mean jesus even said it in through the through the great commission he said go therefore make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. I think sometimes we overlook that command. Everything that he commanded us and falling within that is the taking of the gospel. And I really think that that's one of those things that I gave the, uh, I gave the illustration last night. Uh, I lit a match on the stage and I said, you know, uh, when, when I light this match, like this is, this is our life. And then when that match burns out, what's left is, is there's this burnt mark. There's this residue. There's, there's this, this stain that is going to be on that piece of wood for who knows how long, however long that piece of wood would last without getting messed up. I mean, it'll be there. It, it, it's a reflection of what that was. And so my question then was, is like when it comes to our life, and I think this goes along with what you're saying, what, what mark are we making? You know, are we striving our life to make a mark for ourselves, but then we add God as kind of a, 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 a caveat onto that, for lack of a better word, I guess. I don't know if that's in that context or not but that, that yeah we, just as like a blip on the radar yeah or or, or are we gonna like that that mark let that be defined by like building his kingdom here you living for him and whatever whatever we're in you know whether it's uh whether it's doing uh youtube stuff or whether it's uh in a in a professional setting from a standpoint of finance or lawyer what like whatever it may be whatever professional job that that you hold like are we utilizing our gifts that we have because i think sometimes we want to categorize this out i'm going to just do church at church but i'm not going to do it over here and that's that's not being obedient to the gospel in my opinion right and we are going to leave a mark whether it's good or bad is completely up to us we will leave a mark on the earth which will affect eternity And I think that's a connection that does need to be made. We can affect eternity how we live our life here in the earthly realm. Uh, And that that is dependent on whether we help bring people to salvation, to Jesus Christ, whether we man up and rely on God and admit that we are nothing in light of God and we actually go through with our own salvation. Or obviously that can have a negative as well. We can turn someone away from the faith to get them out of the church yeah. we can uh, send them i mean of course we can't directly but because of our lack of empathy and willingness to help them 
lead them astray and they'll end up dying and going to hell. And then that is, that is us. We have a direct influence. It's crazy to think about how, and to use the real illustration that we see so often where we're just a blip on the rope. We're just a little piece on the rope but to know what we do can affect the rest of it is it's crazy. It's yeah. Funny. Yeah. What do you talk about there is we, we were talking about, you know, we, we kind of used an illustration of a, of a rope last night. It's something y'all have heard that, you know, as we, we, we look at the rope as being our life and, and like it says in James four fourteen, you don't know what tomorrow bring, what your life will be for you're like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Like that's how quick our life is. And so like when I was, I was taking that rope and I was saying, okay, this is the beginning of your life. And then I went kind of further down. This is the end of your, this is the, where you, maybe you graduate high school. Maybe you get your license. We kind of kept going. Maybe you have kids. And then we moved on to, all right, you retired. You got grandkids or whatever. And then the rope ran out. That's it. Uh, so the, mm. the, the question is, is, what impact are we wanting to make? And, and uh, man, I've, I've, not to, not to go down a rabbit trail here, but I just feel like that, that maybe it's one thing that we need to bring up. That a lot of this is contrary to teaching that we hear today. Because when we, when we look at the, the teaching and, and other, other realms of teaching, it's like, you do you, you know, God will bless what you do. But, but the problem with that is that's theology that focuses on you, the individual. No, no, the Bible is written for us to have our attention focused on God. It's not this idea of putting God behind what we want to do. And then he blesses that. God wants to be first and foremost. I mean, that's what Jesus said to his disciples. Like, that's what it means to follow him. It's submitting mm-hmm. to him. It's following him where we go. And, uh, and, and in this life, man, that's so critical for us as believers. Is, not, is, is yeah, I mean, do we want new things in this life? Do, I mean, is, is retirement important? Yes. Is having a good job important? Yes. All these other things. But that should not be our complete focus. I, I, I truly believe if we're keeping our mind in the, in the right direction from a standpoint is we're submitting to God, we're, we're doing what he's leading us to go do. I, I really believe that's where he's then going to take care of us. We may not get everything we want, but I truly believe that he's going to provide us everything that we need. I, I know I've seen that in my life, and I'm sure you've seen that in uh, glimpses of your life, David, as I know your life is just still getting rolling, you know, into the, uh, into the adulthood of life. But, but, uh, but I just, I don't know, I feel like the, the more obedient we can be, blessings come of that, but then we take the blessings that we receive from that, and then we use that to bless others. It shouldn't just stop at God blesses us, and then that's it, you know? Right. I, I completely agree. We do need to <clears throat> help enlist more workers, as the CSB version puts it. When, and that, that's Matthew, I believe, Matthew 9. I was looking at it. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew 9, uh, verses 36 through 38. If you want to go look that up yourself, it's the Lord of the harvest. And So I think the, I think really the, you know, the main takeaway there is just to understand, guys, that, that our life is temporary. And then really ask that question. What are, what, where, what are you doing right now to leverage that? Because I think in a lot of cases, and I'll, I'll let David add this here as well, and, but, but, the, the, the tendency for us is to want to wait is to say, you know what, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just a high schooler, just a middle schooler. Those that are mostly who's watching this. And it's like, I'll just, I'll wait, you know, and I'll, I'll do, I'll do all that later. We're not promised later. You know, that, that there, there's an urgency there. Like I, I think in a lot of cases we think, yeah, we, we're going to live to be, like you said, David, the average age of 70 to 80 or whatever it is, somewhere kind of in that realm. Like we all think we're going to live that, but that may not necessarily be the case. And, uh, and I think God wants us to make the most of our lives. And so my thing is, is why not take every single day, as, as Paul says, to die to self and then live that day, you know, in light of doing everything you can to bring glory to God. You know, you may not necessarily share the gospel with somebody that day, but you know that you're you're, you're trying to keep your attitude in check. You're, you know, you're trying to treat your brothers and sisters of your own family uh, in, a, in, a, in a good way, your teachers or parents or whatever the case may be. Uh, why not just start every day and say, hey, if this is the last day you got, silly example, and it's an overused example, to treat every day like it's the last day, right? Right. And I think this is a fantastic quote by Spurgeon that says, time is short, eternity is long. It is only reasonable that we use this short life to be lived in the light of eternity. I absolutely love that quote because it it, it encapsulates everything that we've been talking about right now. 
man. Yeah, you always you, you introduce me to Spurgeon. You introduce me to Spurgeon, and I just can't. Like, I I like him a lot. So good. He's a, like, what is there? Hey, I mean, we got we got uh, eternity. It it lasts for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, we affect it by the way we live our lives on Earth. That being whether we we impact people and help them pave their path either to hell or heaven. We pave our own paths, whether we rely on God or not, to hell or heaven. And that's really the important part. I, leave it. I do want to leave it with this. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to dive in to the basically understanding heaven, the reality of heaven, and understanding the reality of hell. Now, the, the most important thing is, is for you to wrestle with that question, you know, and what it means. I, I, I used to be in the business of assuming, and it's easy for us to assume mm-hmm. because most of us, you've been coming here for a long time. Uh, you've been coming to church, and I. But I told this to the students. Uh, told it to you guys uh, last night. I said, you know, at some point you're gonna take ownership of your faith. Have you done that? You know, do you do you truly believe in what you believe? Uh, if you have a hard time articulating what you believe, then I made the comment, and I still stand by it that maybe you don't believe in what you think you believe in. And so, uh, when it, what it means to believe is to be certain and for sure. You know, who you are in Christ and what Christ has done for you. And understand that if you've come to a faith in him, your eyes are focused on him, that, that you, you're in him. You're in Christ. You're in him. So, but my point is, is how do you do that? And, and for those of, those of you that are watching this video, if you don't know what that's like, it's, it's, as, simple as, it's as simple as this. Coming to him and saying, you know what, God, I've messed up in my life. I know that I've got sin that, that separated me from you. That's what sin is. Sin separates us and God. That's what it is. Sin is basically, I'll use the example of, uh, of, of schoolwork for those of you that may be watching this. Um, if, you, if you fail a test, that's not necessarily sin. Uh, but if you cheat on a test and, and pass the test when you weren't prepared for it, that would be sin, if that makes sense. And so my, my point is, is sin is anything that we know is wrong that we know we shouldn't do, lying to our parents, telling people things, stretching the truth, like that. that's what sin is. That separates us from God. We all are sinners. We're sinners by nature. And so we got to come to the one who, who uh, saves us from that, and that's coming to faith in Christ. And what that means is coming to him and saying, God, I'm a sinner. I recognize that I've done X, Y, Z, whatever it is, and I want to put my trust and my faith in you. Um, and what that means is saying that I believe in you, and I believe that God sent you to die on a cross for me, to save me, because I could not save myself, uh, because uh, we are that broken and messed up people. Uh, but it's through him and through that saving, that cross, him dying on the cross in three days, raising from the dead, that, that he brings us into a new eternal life with him. That, and the Bible says that Jesus is the only way to the Father. The only way to get to him is by confessing our sins and repenting of the things that we've done in our life does not mean repentance does not mean perfection um, repentance is essentially turning away from the things that we know separate us from god doesn't mean that we're not going to mess up david and i can both tell you that we mess up quite a bit but yeah. understanding that when we mess up we say okay god i'm, I'm not I'm, something's not right here i'm going to give that over to you and ask for forgiveness that's the thing specifically asking for those things and so um, i would i would just encourage you that if that's um, go to God, pray a prayer like that. Uh, you know, you can message us, talk to David or myself. And I know most of who's watching this, you'll see at church. Uh, any leader would love to talk to you about that. Um, but that's simply all it is. It's coming to God, coming to him, understanding Jesus died for you. He rose three days later, overcoming death, serving as a perfect sacrifice because we could not. And, uh, and, and by knowing him and trusting in him, we have eternal life. And so uh, that's, that's the most important question you need to ask yourself is where is your eternity at stake? Is it heaven or is it hell? And we're going to talk about that in, uh, in a sense of uh, in the next couple of weeks. And so we'd invite you guys to tune in for that. If you're not able to be with us, uh, watch us online. We'll be right here live on this same channel. All right, guys, listen, uh, go out, be the light. Uh, we love you, and we will see you all next time. Indeed.